Hello, this video is all about Gauss law. Let's learn its statement, the different forms you can represent Gauss law, and stay tuned until the end because you're going to solve a practical example. You can start asking what is Gauss law? Well, the Gauss law states that the total of the electric flux out of a closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed divided by the permittivity. We can represent it like this. So the total electric flux out of enclosed surface is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity of free space. Okay? So Gauss law, in other words, uh, relates the flow of electric field lines, the flux, right, to the charges within the enclosed surface, okay? So it relates the flow with the charges. If you want to know more about how to represent these electric field lines, we have another video that's in the card uh, all about how to represent the electric field lines, okay? Uh, also, another thing that we can get from the Gauss theorem is that if there are no charges in an enclosed surface, then the net electric flux remains zero, right? Easy. If it's the charge here is zero, then the flux is also zero. Okay, so to better understand the Gauss law, let's take a look into, into the integral form of the Gauss theorem. We can start by uh, considering a Gaussian surface Okay, Gaussian surface is any enclosed surface in the three-dimensional space through which the flux of a vector field is calculated. Okay, it can be any closed surface, but let's take a sphere as an example because we'll make uh, things simpler. Okay, right in the middle of the sphere we have a positive charge. Okay, and because of this charge here we have an electric field that's represented by this vector here, E, okay? And we also have, let's take a really small part of the surface area, the A, okay? And try to calculate the electric field. Well, the electric flux, sorry. So the electric flux is actually the linear integral of E cosine of theta dA. This theta here is the angle between the electric uh, field and the vector of the area, right? But because it's a sphere, uh, it's always parallel to this area here, okay, to this vector. So the cosine of theta, theta is zero, the cosine of zero is one, okay? Also, because it's a point charge here right in the center, we have that the, uh, the electric field around this charge here is constant, okay, and it's E. So throughout the, all the surface of the sphere here, E is constant. So we can take it out from the integral, right? And we end up with this here. Now, well, the, the linear integral of the A is actually you're summing the area all these small areas of the surface, right? So actually this integral here is the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. And E is the electric field. We can calculate the electric field like this. We have another video talking about the electric field, and we talk more about this formula here, so you can take a look there, okay? So now we have the electric field and the integral of dA, and we want to calculate the flux. Well, we can just multiply both, right? And cut all this 4 pi and r squared. And it leaves us with the formula I presented you before, right? That the electric flux is Q, the charge over the permittivity of free space. Okay, now that we learned the theory, it's time to put it to practice. So let's consider a uniformly charged conducting sphere of 1.2 diameter uh, 
has a surface charge density of 8.1 microcoulomb per meter squared. And we want to calculate the total electric flux leaving the surface of the sphere, right? So we have our sphere here, the radius of this uh, sphere, okay, 0.6 meters, and we have the surface charge density, right? So we can start uh, our problem by calculating the area of the surface, okay? It's a sphere, so it's 4 pi r squared. It gives us an area of 4.54 meters squared, okay? Now, before calculate the electric flux, we can we have to calculate the charge, all right? So for this sphere here, we have the surface charge density, okay? We can multiply it by the surface area, so we got we get the charge, which is 3.66 times 10 to the negative 5 coulomb, okay? Now we can simply apply the Gauss laws, okay? We have the electric flux is the charge divided by the permittivity of free space. We have already the charge. The permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. So we get an electric flux of 4.14 times 10 to the 6 newtons meter squared per coulomb. All right. Okay, hope you enjoyed and see you, you next time. What did you think about this video? We appreciate your feedback, so tell us in the comments section.